Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Got a good echo set up. Hi, Edie. Hey, Anthony. Oh, man. Yeah, I heard it is hot in England. I'm in Oregon, and it has been, like, an unusually, like, mellow summer here. And it's, um, I'm very grateful. And I feel your pain. It's usually hot as hell by now. Hey, Meth Raptor. <laughs> yeah, this is when you start Stairway to Heaven. On my mark now this is uh i just got this in the mail today this is a cover i did for where monsters lie figure out how to get it lined up with the camera pretty fun cover looks a little dark on there Somewhere like that in real life. Hey, Mark. This was a fun cover because it was like, what, one, two, three, four, five, six characters, but they only take up like 10% of the cover, and the rest was just that brick wall and the signs and the trees and stuff. Yeah. Anyway, I thought I'd show that off. I also wanted to show off this. I posted on Instagram, and I'm still just like ridiculously like happy about the this hor horsepower column I did. It's very cute. The original art is much bigger. Looks like this. It's not very often I get to do like black and white line art. So I had a I had a lot of fun doing this. I man, I would really like to do a lot more um just black and white line art stuff like this. But um I need that gif of that DJ guy saying that I played myself by doing watercolor stuff. This is fun, and it's fun that you can see how I laid out the the lettering. I penciled it digitally and laid out the lettering so I could um, ink the the balloons. And then I put. I don't remember why I did so much white out. I might have like smudged or something. I don't know, but there's a lot of white out on there. Yeah, so I don't know. I thought that was fun. Oh, I didn't say hi to Ma'at. Hi, Ma'at. So I don't know. I don't really have a good plan for today. I thought maybe I would do something in my sketchbook and uh, yeah not get too nuts I'm really close to being done with this book I only got like four more pages left in here does anyone have any requests for what I should draw tonight. Oh my gosh, Mark, that would be really fun. Do it black and white, try to do a, some sort of manga style. 
One of the ideas with Mecha Saber Gemini is that it is a um, not a good cartoon. And I imagine the manga of it would also not be especially good. Like it's one of those uh, knockoff products that was produced really, um, you know, on the cheap. Oh, Hellboy is tempting, Anthony, but I draw Hellboy all the time. I think uh, Mark's suggestion of doing Kiki is very interesting. I have not. I don't think I've ever drawn Kiki. From Kiki's delivery service, which um, I think I saw you posting about that, Mark, on uh, Mastodon. Kiki's delivery service is very interesting because it um, just the I don't know I don't know if there's another piece of artwork that really talks about or another like story that I've read or seen that really talks about um, the creative. Um, impulse quite as much as Kiki's delivery service. Like, I don't feel like it's a very good representation of sort of how I feel about um, making art or creativity in general, but, um, but it's definitely relatable. It's close enough to be relatable. Edie, when you ask about cartooning faves, you mean like uh, comics cartooning or you mean like animated cartooning? comic strips like as far as like like a newspaper comic strip there's like two strips that are really um important to me there's uh uh calvin and Hobbes, obviously everyone like of my generation was obsessed with calvin and Hobbes, and um uh pogo is the other thing. And Pogo was like not running in the paper by the time, um, you know, I was in like junior high or whatever, it was long gone. But um, there were always Pogo books at the library. Look at that, I've never seen that. That's a, that's a great Kiki poster of her at the bakery. Yeah, Calvin and Hobbes was like, like, no comic strip has really looked that good since then, which is a giant bummer. Like, newspaper strips, I don't know, it's funny how newspaper strips are dying, and they're, like, uglier than they've ever been, and nobody, like, is making the connection and doing anything to, to like, turn it around. think
<laughs> this is a great scene in the movie too. Yeah, me too, Ed. I I miss comic strips a lot. I um. I want so bad to uh. Like I I. I have actually a bunch of ideas for an adventure strip and I keep thinking I need to like develop it a little bit and see if I can pitch it to the local newspaper and see if they would actually pay me to, to do it. I feel like every local paper in the world should have a, an adventure strip, like a historical adventure strip that is about like local history stuff. And, um, I think it'd be really fun to do that um, here, but I mean, who, who has the time? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like too busy trying to develop comic books. All right, let's not get crazy then. Let's just do kind of a regular. Kiki and Gigi on a broom. That'll be fine. <laughs> yeah there's there's a lot of ghibli movies that i have never seen um but i think if you're going to see one kiki's delivery service is a good one it's one of those um great movies where the um like the antagonist is not a, a person you know it's like about a person struggling with a thing that isn't, you know, that isn't a person. And that's like, that's pretty fucking great. Someone else was asking me on Instagram the other day if I had a preference between antagonists that are people or, um, or ideas. And I... Don't know if I necessarily have a preference, but I do think that like they're not. There's there's so many more stories where the antagonist is always a person that it is uh, always refreshing when there's an, a problem to solve that isn't a person. What were you and Colin talking about backups in comics, Mark? Oh, yeah. Mark says, I was saying how the backups are a good hook for his other books. It's like an issue of Manor Black could have a Tales of Hare County short in the back or a Shock Shop short. Yeah, that would um, that would be smart. I mean, I think like Dark Horse should do that. Like, well, like every publisher should do that in general, anyway. Like, um, backup stories are such a great way to um, advertise comics and to um, try out new talent and 
all kinds of stuff. Like there's so many great reasons to to do backup stories and nobody does them anymore. Kind of like, I don't think it's quite the same thing as what you're thinking about, Ed. Like, I think, um, like, I'm thinking about just like a, a single page or a or a two page or a four page story. Lots of times, um, like, I don't know I think in the '60s, '70s, and '80s, they always kept those. Um, like had a bunch of those sitting around for when a story ran short or like there's, or if they didn't get enough advertisers that month or whatever, like there's all sorts of reasons why they might need to fill up extra space. started to make Kiki very happy and it felt like felt wrong. <laughs> Well, I've been doing like layouts and sketches and des character designs and stuff all week long. And it is, feels very nice to just draw. Like a normal picture. Instead of something that's going to turn into something. Yeah, totally, Mark. And I think also, like, um, yeah, if they stuck a Hellboy short in the back of every comic, there's going to be Hellboy fans who will have to buy a bunch of extra comics. <laughs> very, very cynical of me, but it would it would sell comics. Oh shit, look at this. There's like a million 
Kiki's delivery service radios you can buy out there. That's pretty cute. Yeah, I think Kiki. I don't know. Like, what are the what are the really popular Ghibli films? There's Kiki and um, Princess Mononoke and Spirited Away and Howl's Moving Castle and like the big ones have so many fans. It's ridiculous. There was a Ghibli DVD player where the remote control was an acorn. That sounds incredible. <laughs> There's so many girls with red ribbons in their hair in the audience. Yeah, that's very cute. That's a very like um, casual cosplay that you can pull off. Yeah, Grave of the Fireflies counts, but um, I don't think it quite has the same. It has a different fan um, fan base. <laughs> that is a beautiful film, but um, not the kind of movie that um, most people can watch like four times in a weekend. Oh, and Nausicaa. That's another big one. That's one. I think that was the first Studio Ghibli movie I ever saw. And I remember like we we rented it or bought the DVD and then watched it that night just before going to bed. And um, I remember waking up the next morning and being like, I have to watch that again. And starting it up, like, before, like, fixing my breakfast or anything. I really like Nausicaa. <laughs> yeah, I um Grave of the Fireflies is rough. And you know, it's one of those things like especially in America, it's not um it's not gonna be a popular film. Nausicaa is one of those things. I need to finish the um, the manga. I have started it a bunch of times, and the problem is, I think I'm, I might have talked about this on on stream before, but like I bought it in the giant 
omnibus edition and it's basically unreadable like the books are just too big so i should probably like buy them digital and read them that way What's amazing is he did, um, that animation studio did Grave of the Fireflies and Nausicaa at the same time. And I can't remember what the deal was. There was something where they had to do one, they had to do both in order to get either of them made. which seems pretty brutal on probably their production staff. Yeah, I have to, I do not doubt it, Mark, that the Nausicaa manga is um, a masterpiece. Like, I feel like, and that's how I feel about um, Akira, where it's like the movie is great, but um, it's absolutely nothing compared to the, the book. This is an interesting interpretation of Kiki's hair. I don't know if, um, I don't know if it's quite right. A guy on YouTube is making a live action Nausicaa. That's interesting. Is he doing it with like CG effects? Or is it sort of like him and his garage? Like his friends and everything just doing stuff in his garage? Interesting. I wonder um I wonder how Studio Ghibli feels about stuff like that. Man, the absolute worst thing that ever happened to Studio Ghibli was um John Lasseter, like being the guy that helped bring them to Disney distribution. I don't know what it's like in other countries, but the um, every like DVD you could get for years, you had to sit through looking at John Lasseter's dumb face, telling us how lucky we are. And it always just felt super gross, even before I knew, heard, you know, that John Lasseter was a, was a creepo. It always just felt like him, like, 
trying to insert some sort of like um, ownership over uh, Studio Ghibli stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the culture is like for um, Studio Ghibli. Like, like there was they were doing those fan movies of Star Wars for years that um, were sort of well regarded by Lucas films. Yeah, I've I've never like um, watched them in subs, so I've never compared the the dialogue. But um, yeah, I could imagine he um, did not do a good job managing the translation. So it would be really great if they would. Um, do new additions now that that dude's gone. I just realized I'm making Kiki's bag look like Emmy's bag from Howe County. Man, Maude is cooking dinner and it is smelling really good. <laughs> I got mixed feelings about dubs versus subs. For one thing, like... Um, I'm usually drawing while I have a movie on, which makes um, subs impossible to watch. But, and I think you can have good dubs. But it also, but it requires like a really, um, you have to really understand what's being said in order to write the dialogue and match it. Like you have to, like, I feel like a lot of times they just have somebody give you a rough translation of the dialogue and then they have someone sort of rewrite it. But it's like, I don't know. It's not as easy as just sort of translating. Um, I do not know what's on the menu. Some sort of spicy pork thing. Spicy pork and veggies on rice. Yum, yum. So I started using Blue Sky uh, this week. I guess I started last week. Um, it's like a it's like a Mastodon competitor 
or a Twitter competitor. <clears throat> um, but so far, it's pretty good. I mean, it's going to... Um, something awful is going to happen. <laughs> For sure. Something awful is going to happen there. Um, but it hasn't happened yet. But they have stated that... Um, like they're still, it's in beta, so they're still finalizing a lot of stuff. Like they're finalizing the terms of service. And they have said that they will make um, like hate speech will be against the terms of service and stuff. Unlike Twitter, where suddenly like cis is considered hate speech. Which is bizarre. Oh, I'm just... ED, I don't know for sure that something awful is going to happen to Blue Sky. I just don't trust any of these social media platforms to... Um, you know, be good for very long. But it was nice. I got an, an invite to the beta, like, right um, when I was deciding that I had to, like, shut down my Twitter account. And um, it's been fun over there. I don't know. I'm addicted to social media. I have, like, an actual problem. So it's like... Um, it's, I was describing it to someone else as my methadone for the, for my tarot, my Twitter heroin addiction. Yeah. Being a social media nomad is weird. I kind of hope that, um, I don't know. I kind of, I have mixed feelings about it. I kind of hope that it never like uh, reduces down to two or three websites again. I hope it can like sort of shatter and be more um, interesting. Although that does make it very hard to do like marketing stuff. I miss, I definitely miss blogs. Oh, you know what? Speaking of blogs, uh, Tonsi Zoniak did an interesting blog about, um, I think he just posted it today, um, about his approach to social media. Sort of just thinking out loud about it. And um, it was interesting. <clears throat> I don't know if I can really summarize it for you, but um, but I think uh, I think he feels the same. I think I feel kind of similar to him, where I'm like I'm the way social media has been working is not. Like, it's not going to get me through the next decade. You know, it's not going to work for me for the next five years. Like, if, if I can't find a new way to be on social media, I'm going to have to, like, ditch it entirely. And that's part of why I'm doing this. Why I'm doing the live streams is to try to try to find a different way to be on the internet.
Oh, Jesus, I forgot Gigi. Oh my gosh, a week without speaking. That sounds rough. Actually, <laughs> that's one of those things where if you could do it electively, it sounds like it would be incredible. But sort of being forced in that situation does not sound nice. Yeah, and that's the thing about it's the thing about social media is that it's like it's just fucked up to have um, like weird tech bros be dictating the terms on which under which like you talk to your friends, and it's like. Like Twitter especially feels like it's turned into like, oh, if you want to talk to your friends, then you have to like give yourself like be accessible to Elon Musk's friends who are all, you know, giant turds. Kiki is a pretty good design. She's like, got three colors. Her dress, her satchel, and her ribbon. And her ribbon is almost the same color as her radio. And she's just a very efficient, like I'm sure she was largely designed for um, production, you know. The fewer colors, the faster it can get through ink and paint. Oh my gosh, Mark. The lockdowns where I live were um, like barely lockdowns at all, you know, like, like there was like a week when businesses weren't allowed to be open and then there was like a week when businesses weren't allowed to be open but everyone was open anyway
and me and Mott, um, both just <laughs> stay home all day long anyway. Oh man, Ed. I don't know if coders are. Well, I don't know. I guess a lot of coders are angry. When I was doing video games, I definitely saw a lot of programmers who um, did the did the thing where they um, were really good programmers, and so they assumed that that made them. Uh, really good at everything. Or, you know, like they knew they knew really good algebra. So then they also knew um, what women wanted universally, like that sort of bullshit. Well, that definitely wasn't every programmer, but it was definitely a trend. Oh my gosh, Mark, that sounds like a dream.
I always just imagine you, Ed, sitting in front of your computer, screaming at the top of your lungs. All caps. <laughs> what is Rogue No Dengon, Mark? Did I say that right? <laughs> I don't I don't know if I've ever like listened to um the soundtracks for these on their own. I should give that a shot. I'm not a giant soundtrack guy. But um but occasionally I do occasionally I do partake. Well, I'm tempted to call it quits on this, but I think I'm going to try. Like, I love, I love this. Like, I love a little drawing on a page, like a, just a little gem with lots of white space. Like, that feels very fun to me. But I think I'm going to do a little bit of airbrush. And just a slight blue gradient on here.
maybe next week I'll clean my airbrush. It's kind of a mess. Ugh, man, I'm I don't miss tabletop gaming, but I do miss a lot of stuff. Um, I've been missing um, conventions really bad. Like everyone went to Heroes Con last weekend, and I wanted to go pretty bad. I miss karaoke really bad. That's something I don't know if I'm going to get back to anytime soon. Now that is a satisfying sketchbook page.
That's very fun to me. Like it feels like a finished piece. But it's stuck in a bush. Yeah, if you can get to Heroes Con, it's a fun show. Very art centric. I've only been once, but um I would definitely like to get back. All right, well, I'm going to call it a night, everybody. Ugh, man. I didn't, I don't know if I saw those specifically, Mark, but everyone who was there seemed like they were having a great time. All right. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me for this little Kiki sketchbook piece. Um, I think it turned out nice. I'm happy with that. Um, I hope you all have a great week and have a great weekend and um, get some rest and have some fun. Do the stuff you want to do. All right, everybody. Bye.